uh, the cast of Community is doing a table read of one of the episodes from season five uh, and releasing. I saw that. Releasing it on May 18th. I'm so happy. And apparently that it looks like that show is coming back. It looks like the movie is there's good talks in talks and i'm yes I i'm saw very that. excited it's like who good stuff well you just started season it's good you just stuff. started season four. Yeah. Oh, it's you can tell you can tell that the writers changed because they're like they're making fun of community in the show but not in like a way of like haha we wrote it and wink wink nudge nudge at ourselves but it's like isn't it ridiculous that a study group had this room this whole time that's really weird isn't it we need to call that out because we're new writers and it's like no stop it's it's not like just just no one finds that funny no it's not sorry. i'm excited to get past it and get because season five and six i liked we had you know dan Harmon came back but season four just it, it just felt really it feels like they're trying to be something that they're not it just i don't know the actors the actors yeah. make it worth watching though because they're all fantastic yeah, that's the hard part when you change, like, writers, too, right? Especially if you've had the same writers for most of a series. And then you change the writers, it's like, well, damn. Like, it has a totally different voice, right? Because everyone brings something a little different to the table. It's one thing to, like, switch out one or two writers, but when you're changing, like, all the writers, it's, yeah, it's, it gets a little bit dicey. Cool, yeah. man. You ready to roll? Start this and- Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to A Feast of Films, Episode 3. I'm your host today, Matt Black. Along with me is... Ethan R. Hill. Back again for the third episode. This guy. Yeah. This guy. It is Episode 3. So welcome, all you people, film fans, movie fans, music fans, whatever you're a fan of, storytelling fans. Are they fans of us? Are they fans of us? Maybe they're fans of us. (laughs) Probably not. No, that that seems unrealistic. This is only episode three. It's, we'll get there eventually. So to future fans who are listening Probably. from future episodes <laughs> back, hi. I'm being optimistic. I'm just being really optimistic. <laughs> You're being super optimistic right now because I'm telling you right now, that's probably not a thing. Hey, a man can dream. <laughs> to everyone listening from the future, hello. Just crickets. Nobody's there. <laughs> Well, it's a podcast. They can't oh, hear us. They can't. They can't comment back. I mean, they can comment, but they can't uh, pop up in the audio. That would be even weirder. It's like, hi, future fans, and yeah, then we hear weird. like a random hello from like somewhere in the ether, and it's just like, what's going on? That would be. <laughs> that would be highly concerning. I'd be like, my house is haunted. I need to end this podcast <laughs> and leave immediately. <laughs> no, it's th- then before we just, the walls start bleeding. <laughs> we just change, and like the third host is the ghost in your house. <laughs> yeah we just leave and it's like hello everybody welcome to the podcast what was your favorite film of ghost talk what was your favorite film of 2017 ghost get out yeah i like that movie too <laughs> i feel like it would be ghost <laughs> but get out actually oh, came man. out in 2017. okay come on matt that was a funny joke come on yeah that was get out oh man I, did i put that on my list i don't know if i did it deserves it to be on my list though i don't know here's an honorable mention for me all right for anyway sure. um <laughs> enough of our <laughs> pre we're getting ahead of our we're getting banter. ahead of ourselves uh we're getting a little carried away here let's bring it all the way back around um anyway so let's get started today we got a lot of topics to go over we got a surprise question of the day brought to you by ethan we're gonna be talking about standout scores because music is awesome. Of course, we're going to have 20 years, 20 movies for 2017. And then what's next? So we got a full feast ready for you guys. So let's quit wasting time. I hope you're hungry. Dinner is served. Let's get into it. Surprise question of the day. That's going to you, Ethan. What do you got for us? All right. For the surprise question of the day. Um, if you could watch one movie for the first time again, what would it be? And what's... And then, so this two prong question though, and the second qu- okay, part of the okay. question, the second part of the question is, what movie do you think if you did watch for the first time again you wouldn't like? Who? That's tough, right? Okay, so so number one is like what movie you would watch for the yeah, first time if you again? Could, if you could have if an experience could? of watching a movie again, like say that's your favorite movie, yeah, and you would just love to see it again for the first time, fresh eyes, yeah, and just experience what you experienced the first time you watched it what would you be and then yeah which one do you think wouldn't age well at all where it's like 
you know, you thought you liked it a lot. So it's like the opposite. Like, yeah, yeah it's if the, you it's the, it the first time, you'd be like, oh, this is not good. It's like movies that you you would only watch for because nostalgia, because that totally. Ooh. That's a tough question, isn't it? Ooh, man, that's such a good question, Ethan. I love it, though. Like, the questions that you ask, I mean, you've only had two questions, and I've only had one. So this is hard to kind of judge by, and I'm just kind of like, you know, generalizing here. <laughs> but I love your questions, man. Like, just really, like, introspective. Damn, that's a good question. Because really, when it comes down to it, the first time you watch a movie is like an experience you'll never have again. Because yep. you could never recapture that moment. Oh, what movie would I watch again for the first time? Oh, that is such a hard question. Um, There's so many I'd love to watch again for the first time. It would have to be... Oh, man. I I'm kind of bouncing back and forth between, like, two you can have right You can now. have... <clears throat> You can have uh, multiple answers, I guess, because like, that's actually kind of where I'm at, too, is I have, there's a couple that, like, I'd have to choose between, and, like, uh, I can explain my reasons. Do you want me to answer first, or do you want to answer first? I'm cool either way. Yeah, you, uh, you, you, you know what? No, I'll, I'll just go. I'll just go. Yeah, I'll man, just, let's... I'll just pick one, and I'll, I'll just pick one and deal with it. Um, I would love to watch again for the first time, um, Star Wars episode uh i think episode five that was the one that like really did for me i did watch episode four like and i watched these when i was like a wee youngin when i first watched these um obviously they'd been out quite a while before i was born <laughs> so it's not like it was 20 I years it's the fine <laughs> it was a great time no like you watched them at home right yeah but just just being no what no i'm probably gonna go with episode four like i gotta stick with the original i gotta stick with the classic i was also gonna say lord of the rings return of the king that's also on the list i would love to watch it again for the first time i absolutely adore that movie uh but i am gonna go with the original star wars just because it's such a perfect uh hero's journey right it is the classic story that is told um it's your first introduction to this mysterious and amazing and incredible universe's world uh, you know, the moment that Luke Skywalker is sitting with Obi-Wan Kenobi and he's talking about the Clone Wars and the Jedi and he brings out the lightsaber for the first time and yep. you're like, holy shit, that is the best thing I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life. And I was probably like four when I watched that or maybe yep. five. It was pretty early on. But and even in that moment, you were captured by the the mysticism and the 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 legends and the mystery of what this clone wars what the prequels ultimately ended up uh becoming but damn and then it pulls you into this world right you eventually leave tatooine you get the death star you have darth vader you get to experience and get this first taste of the force and the rebels this small group fighting against this big overwhelming empire like there's so many things about this movie that it's just, it's an amazing that I just it's, wish it's I could experience movie. again for the first time, like raw. Like, more or less, I wish I had no idea what Star Wars was, and I just got to watch it, like, today for the first time and get to experience all those feelings all over again. Like, just, because it, it was so, it was such a powerful impact. And honestly, I wish I could watch it back when it first came out in theaters. That's what I really wish. Like, I wish I had no idea what special effects were, and I was in, it was 1970-whatever, whenever it came out there, I don't... 77. Do you know the date? Oh, yeah. 77, yeah. That's it, that's it. I wish it was 1977, and I was watching this for the first time, as, like, a grown-ass adult, and being like, holy See, that's, shit. That's something like, I thought about, too, is, like, like, like time travel-wise. Yeah. If I could ever go back in time, it would literally just be to go, like, movie, movie premieres and uh, concerts. You'd still have to be super, like precautious about that because if you say took a ticket away from someone who saw that movie and was like super inspired and then didn't end up seeing that movie because you took their ticket you could screw the timeline up but like still going back to <laughs> a theater sure, yeah. in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and just watching a movie in theaters for the first time like i just i like man like there's just there's an energy about that there's just something that i would just that that's what i'd use time travel for which is completely not the question that yeah. was asked but like no i, I yeah yeah no and I think, like, I think Star Wars is a very generic answer, I suppose. Like, 
uh, in a certain way. Because I'm sure that for many people, that's kind of the first experience like a lot of people would want to rehab. Uh, but also, maybe it is also the answer to the second part of that question. Because now we're, now we're talking about timelines here. And I know I'm throwing your question really for a loop and like changing it completely, almost. Uh, because it's almost the same answer, right? Like, if I watched it back, as a, if I got to watch it as a child, yeah, I would love it. If I got to watch it back in 1977, I would love it. As an adult now, if it came out as it is now, like in the world that we have all these special effects and the first time i saw star wars was right now i don't know if it would hold up exactly well i think to what it did in 1977 or when you know we were as child not like i guess the storytelling storytelling is timeless right like yeah. the elements are all there but i would just be concerned or maybe even uh it's it's hard to say well it's so like in this scenario it's it, it's hard to, it's hard to say because it's like with, with the lack of special effects or like the the of the time right would that affect my enjoyment of the movie or taking it seriously you know i, I don't mean? think like, especially it would after you necessarily. saw something like endgame or infinity war that that would be my only thing though that, that that'd be my only question when it comes to that movie in regards, so I kind of question myself. On but that, do you do you like watching older movies from the seventies and eighties? Like, do you watch Indiana Jones that kind of stuff? Yeah, I do, and so, I really enjoy them. And I, like, I really enjoy practical effects and stuff too. So, so I think I guess, honestly, but but I'm saying like in a world where that never happened, because without Star Wars, how much Indiana Jones would be made? Like Harrison Ford, right? Like that was his. Oh, this isn't about key um, in there. So. The question isn't about the world not happening. It's specifically right. You would get See, your memory. That's right. See, you would now get I'm your memory. Confused. Now, so in, <laughs> in this scenario, you get your memory erased of Star Wars, and you get to watch it again for the first right, time. Right. Right. See, that's why I said I'm ruining your question. Oh, you're not at way a, too no, deep. No, I don't mind this at all, man. This is completely. this is good stuff. See, this works. Uh, Can I hijack okay, your answer yes, for a then. second? Yeah. I think okay. I think, um, for the first part of the question, your answer like I dig the Star Wars answer. I feel like the second one would probably still be Star Wars, and I think it would be um, Episode One probably wouldn't age as well if you went back and watched that one fresh without any context of other Star Wars stuff. I feel like you might not. That one might not sit well with you. <laughs> yeah, so when I watched that, that's a good point. Um, episode one or, or two. It'd be episode one or two. Yeah, honestly, it'd probably be two. Like, episode one still had a lot of really good things that got added to Star Wars. And we'll touch on that as we continue to go through the episode here, because I got something from that. I love, I love that every but, every uh, podcast so far it's gotten back to Star Wars, and we're still promising well, a Star dude, Wars episode. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Star Wars is classic. I mean, it's it's a benchmark of filmmaking. It's not just about geeks and like we love Star Wars stuff. By the way, I'm teaching my kid how to make lightsaber noises, and he's doing a fantastic job. By the amazing. way, amazing. He sits there and he goes. And he moves his hands. It's great. I'm like, God, we're gonna have so much fun when you get a little bit older and can actually like do them right. Now he's gonna I'm become... teaching him the Palpatine lightning. He's gonna become a jock. lightning thing. Oh, oh, your son's man. gonna become a it's jock, great. and it's gonna just break your heart. He can be a jock, but he also has love to love Star Wars. Star Wars okay, so <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like Star Wars isn't just for like geeks, or, like weird people like me, but it is such a benchmark of film and what film evolved to be today. Like. I don't think you could really have, could you have Infinity War? Could you have Endgame? Could you have all these big, like, big sci-fi epics without Star Wars existing? And I would argue, probably not. Like, I think if you took Star Wars out of the timeline, you're taking away something so critical to not just the creativity and imagination of people, but to the industry itself. Oh, 100%. Um, Definitely. But yeah, I would say episode two, because I think episode one, I'd still like a lot of areas of it. Jar Jar Binks would not be the same as the first time I watched it, because I was right in the age profile that Jar Jar Binks was supposed to be oh, weren't we entertaining, both? right? Like, I can't remember when he came out. It came out in 99. 99. Yeah, we were both so, eight. So it would have been <laughs> eight years old, right? So that's your prime. You're like, yeah, Jar Jar is not that bad. And then you watch it 10 years later, you're like, oh my God, he's a disaster. Man, <laughs> I don't, you know what I, mean? I don't but, know about you, but like... When you when we were eight and Star Wars Episode One was coming out, the hype was real. Like it was. Oh yeah, the hype is real, and I mean the hype is real for grown ass people too. It was the first Star Wars since 
you know, episode six. We just but didn't hate it as much. the movie came out, then a lot of people didn't disliked it. We just enjoyed it. Though. Like, like, we just genuinely Like, at what point, it. at what point did you realize, hey, maybe this movie isn't as good as I remember it being? Uh, probably when I was, probably about like 10, maybe 10 years later when you kind of rewatch it again. Yeah, like right around. Uh, when you have a bit more understanding of the craft and the art and storytelling and, and, uh, just how those characters impact you, right? Because as you grow and mature, Jar Jar obviously is not going to be as intriguing of a character. Like I remember going into episode two, which came out in 2000 and... 2002. 2002, three. yeah, because it was usually about three years in for, between, for the right? original trilogy so, and the prequel trilogy. It was always three years mm-hmm. apart, right? So 2002, I remember going into that and being disappointed as uh, you know an 11 year old. So still only a couple years later, being more disappointed there wasn't more Jar Jar. I was like, hey, where's Jar Jar, man? Why, why we got more Jar Jar? And of course, you know, add another eight years to that. I'm like, thank God we didn't get more Jar Jar. <laughs> I mean, he did have a pivotal role to play in that movie, but exactly. I'm just glad we didn't get more of him. And, and I then by episode, episode two three, was the perfect amount to use Jar Jar. By episode three, he just that was even one the line. Best he has one line. He has. He says, "Excuse <laughs> yeah, me," he, and then he, he disappears. He he does literally nothing. Well, that's good. He so served that, his purpose. That was that was that was fine for me. Um, but yeah, going back and rewatching it, some characters wouldn't hit as powerfully, but some other moments would have hit more powerfully. And just recently, I even developed an even deeper understanding of certain moments in that movie, and I'll touch on that again a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I think episode two went not last as well. Like when I watch episode two now, even compared to 10 years ago when I watched it, it does not sit as well with me. Like it is far more draggy. It is far, I'm like, oh, I'm just less interested in it until like the last third of the movie. So yes. Yeah. I agree. I will wrap up my answer that it's been 20 minutes <laughs> to your very simple but yet thoughtful question. Episode 4 would be the movie I would watch again for the first time as an introduction to Star Wars into the world. I think just reliving that that magic right in those first moments that is that is something special. So I would love to rewatch that again. And then I guess, yeah, you're right. Episode two would be my movie that just wouldn't sit as well. Also, probably Napoleon Dynamite. Like, I remember watching (laughs) Napoleon Dynamite for the first time. It was terrible then. It would probably be worse now. But my second viewing, I loved it. So, But we're just talking about first viewings. So I probably still hate it on my first viewing this time. So Napoleon Dynamite, also throwing that in there. (laughs) Okay. Let's get to you. I'm done. I'm going to shut up. Okay, what are your what are your uh, what are your answers there? But so, mine's kind of for the opposite reasons of yours, I guess, because I thought Star Wars briefly, I did, but I have such a strong and Lord of the Rings too. But I have really strong memories of the first time I watched those movies. Like I have very vivid, mm-hmm. strong, positive memories that I wouldn't want to ever lose that i would never want to like replace that with like a new memory of me watching it because they they've been with the, those sure. memories have been with me since i was a very <clears throat> very young kid but then there's two movies that for some reason i have zero recollection of watching they've always just been well, it's actually it's two franchises that have always just been a part of my um a part of my life and a part of my knowledge and i can't remember the first time i saw them and that's back to the future and indiana jones i have zero memory about the first time i saw either of those movies either of those franchises right period there's just they've always been ingrained in my system as just existing as movies so i would Mm -hmm. love to have a memory with that i'd love to actually be able to remember the first time i watched those movies because it's just it's (laughs) I, I genuinely kind of get sad when I think about that because it's like, oh, yeah, Back to the Future. I love that movie. I don't know what it feels like to watch it for the first time. I've just <laughs> always known what happens. I've always, like, there's never been a surprise or a twist moment watching any of them. Like, the closest it right. comes to is, like, my parents had a v- uh, VHS of Temple of Doom that I wasn't allowed to watch until I t- reached a certain age because it was darker, right? So I remember watching enough, that yeah. for the first time. <laughs> Kalima. But like 
But I mean, I already had two movies of knowledge of Indiana Jones, right? So it wasn't like it was just watching another adventure with Indy, <laughs> and there was still just I said I just I'm just, just missing that. It's missing that feeling of wonder the first time you see a movie like that. Yeah, feeling of wonder. That's a good way to sum it up. Yeah. And then yeah. Honestly, I don't for the second part of the question because I feel like that sums up the first one. <laughs> I think it does. Yeah. It's a lot shorter than my answer. <laughs> it's just 20 years later. I'm just getting lost in my own head. <laughs> well, that's because I've had time to think about it. So I could, cause I knew the question. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Um, I'm trying to think of a movie though. That wouldn't age well. There's a lot actually. There's, there's a decent amount. Um, cause I think some of the older films, cause I don't mind watching older movies, but like, some of kind of the cheesier ones like uh logan's run or planet of the apes might not sit as well with me especially having um i just thought of another question for a future episode uh (laughs) um no i'm gonna take this far left uh left field i'm just gonna say uh scott pilgrim versus the world i don't think i would like that as much because i've read the books And after watch, like I'd watch the movie first and then read the books. And after reading the books, I like the movie a little bit less. So if I was to completely erase that moment from me and like, and do the books first, I probably would still like just the the movie would not, there wouldn't be any kind of inkling of liking it because like to me just, and it's hard to, it's hard to judge something based on that because it's an adaptation of a book series. Like it's obviously not going to be as good, but I think to me it just wouldn't especially if it's the exact same movie and it's it's a very 2010s movie which is i mean we i know we just started 2020 but like um it's just a very in its time it'll be, it'll be between that or some 90s movies i just yeah it's that's a tough one i think there's a honestly i think the the real answer to this is there's a lot of movies that i think if we went back without the nostalgia or the memories that we wouldn't like and i mean like that's happened to movies that i still remember the first time watching like the transformers franchise right it's it's one of those ones of like (laughs) i've gone back and watched the original one which like i thought i loved that first transformers movie and no it's just not like it's just not great it just it just doesn't last as much i think even too kind of like how you pointed out like you made a point that saying reading the books and then if you went to watch the movie it would be you you would have a different feeling about the movie the first time you watched it and i think that's just in general like as our understanding grows as we get older and we experience more things i think that ultimately would change so many of our viewing experiences when it comes to these movies well like at the end of the day essentially like (laughs) you become i think it's it's a weird mix of two not great things because you become more um you become more aware and knowledgeable and that's that's not a bad thing but i think another part of it too though is you become more cynical as you get older you become more critical about things that you really don't need to be critical about and i'm trying to reach yeah yeah. i'm trying to retrain myself to just enjoy movies at the moment when i'm there rather than rather than nitpick all the time and like there's a difference between being critical for the sake of like learning and then being critical because you're a jerk like it's it's a well sometimes movies just aren't good though. well that and that's the other <laughs> so, thing too but and like they, that that's fair if it's bad it's bad man if it's bad it's bad but i get what you're saying like as a kid you could just sit back and enjoy you you weren't nitpicking the writing or the acting or the costumes or the shots you weren't you're just sitting back you were letting the movie just take you with it even if it was a bad movie as kids, we're like, it doesn't matter. We're just going to watch this because this is cool amazing. Stuff probably oh, will happen. I love movies. Yeah, exactly. And and then again, and as we grow, we get more cynical. We get deeper understanding. Yeah, very much changes our viewing experience. I'm, like if you watch something you loved as nine, you probably won't like it as 29. So at the, risk, love of, it as much anyway. at the risk of changing my answer again. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> uh, I'm going to actually say uh, Rockadoodle. <laughs> I have no idea what that you is. You don't know what Rockadoodle is? What the is? hell is oh Rockadoodle? Goodness, what the hell it is, a, is Rockadoodle? It is a, uh, a 90s Don Bluth film. 
Uh, he brought us such treasures as An American Tale and Land Before Time. And Okay, yeah, I know those. Yeah. I love Land Before Time. So he also did this one called Rockadoodle, which is just a bizarre movie. We watched it. Me and my friends watched it. And that's why I can say, like, I don't think it would hold up because me and my friends watched it, I think, about <laughs> six months to a year ago for the first time ever. Yeah. I have a VHS of it. We popped in the VHS and we started watching it. And we were just like, what? What is this? What are we even watching? Because it's, like, about this, like, this, uh, basically this rooster who's kind of Elvis, I guess, or some kind of, like, rock and roll rooster who, like, brings the sun up and these owls are trying to like stop him from doing that because they thrive at night and like this child gets turned into a cat and they're trying to find this rooster named i think his name is chanticleer which is just a weird name but like it's it's just god this sounds so familiar you probably like, as you're saw it, it man. i can almost picture it i probably did see it at some like, point in time as a kid here give me two seconds because that know. sounds like you're talking about it and like these images are popping in my head i'm like god maybe i've seen this holy hell we're just gonna also side note i love land before time i just watched it the other day on netflix i saw it on there the other it's, night i was like oh sick up. land before time i watched it does that look familiar to you i've seen that movie i've totally seen that movie right? i've totally seen that movie so like Again, oh man, I think uh, I I thoroughly enjoy my it brain to a is point, going to, but I also it's my one brain of those ones is that going I, to explode because you cause you remember things are you, flooding back. I can't. This is like total recall. <laughs> like things are flooding back. I'm going. Nah, my head. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> my head hurts. Yeah, well, it's, Get it's, to the chopper. That. That was a oh. ride and a half of a movie, and dude, I almost want to watch that as an adult. I, I like think you should. Detail. I promise nothing. I promise that I, I don't <laughs> promise that you're gonna like it, but you should definitely, <sighs> definitely check it out and uh, report back to me because I, 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 man, like yeah, that's one I completely forgot about until now, and I think that's genuinely one that just would not, it would not age well. Like it's good for kids. I think it's it's freaky. It's definitely like it's it's horrifying. But I mean, a lot of kids' movies from when we were growing up were like. Let's be honest. Like, <laughs> Dude, yeah, no doubt. There are so many weird things. I have this one movie that always pops into my head, and I think it was a made-for-TV movie. Just like how I'm remembering the images and the quality of it. It definitely seems made for TV. Like it doesn't seem like an actual movie. Movie. Um. But it had something to do, it was, I can't remember if it was Thanksgiving or Halloween, it had something to do with that, and it was about like a turkey that maybe had died but had come back to life, and it was like killing people or something, it was like this evil turkey, <laughs> like, I just have these brief images of a turkey being like, blah, 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 and people being like, ah! and then like kills some people or something, but it was like a kid's show, so it was really effed up, like it was... It seems really strange, and I have no idea what that would have been. Was like it, maybe it could have been a dream too, but I feel like I don't dream in movies. I feel like it was an actual movie, or at least made for TV movie or something. It was just it was like strange, strange. If anybody has any clue what I'm talking about, evil turkey, either hunting down or I don't I can't remember if it killed people. Well, there's a, honest, there's a movie. I feel like it did in 2008 called thanks killing i feel like it would have been way earlier than that maybe this memory is very vague maybe there's like an like episode of goosebumps or images something uh yeah i don't know i'll have to look it up if anyone also has this vague image of this evil turkey running around and i can't tell i don't know if it was again thanksgiving or halloween kind of thing but it was really messed up I was like, man, they used to put, like, weird things yep. on for kids back in the 90s. <laughs> things just, like, you watch nowadays, you're like, that was, that was a kid's movie? Okay. Like, I wouldn't let my kid watch that now, but okay. Crazy stuff. Great question, by the that's, way. Yeah, that's, Great question. That got a lot out of us. <laughs> Dude, that got, that got the, that got the blood pumping. I had a total recall moment. I got to remember rock and doodle do rock a doodle man i'll i can send you links <laughs> rock and rock and doodle do 
and uh yeah just got my mind warped there kind of went off the rails i was like i'm changing this question into time travel <laughs> that's fine yeah, yeah, <laughs> which that's wasn't fine. really it's the all case, good man that's it's fine. part that's of the fine. conversation that's fine um that Ooh, being said yeah, that was um, good though for future uh, surprise questions of the day, me and Matt are going to keep coming up with them. However, if you have any suggestions for surprise questions of the day, uh, you can leave a comment on the YouTube channel. Uh, let us know if you have anything you want to hear us surprise each other with. Um, or if you have any topics you want us to cover and share opinions on, please leave that in the comments as well. And we will do our best to answer some, some some surprise questions and uh answer some topics and discuss our feelings on them yeah right down in the down in the comment section below and i think we are going to try set up an email as well so people can kind of email in their suggestions um but we'll kind of let you know in the coming episodes if we do that or not but let's start with the comments down below and uh see how, see that, how that goes i probably should have mentioned that before we got into the questions of the day i got distracted by whatever else we were talking about before <laughs> hey, it's... in our intro but this is fine this is fine we're here now yeah exactly we got it if you want to you know make us I feel like I'm if you want to make us lose our minds <laughs> and uh talk for 20 minutes just about uh star wars again feel free uh yeah that's probably gonna happen yep. all right Okay, so let's keep moving on here. We spent, that was a great question of the day. Uh, let's move on to a hopefully shorter topic before we get into the real meat of our feast. Today's small topic, we're going to be doing a uh, standout score is the name of this segment. And it's the most standout score that you've heard of the week. Um, we, we've talked about before in other podcasts, like in previous episodes, I guess, you know, the other two. Uh, but there's all these different arts and crafts and technical still skills and 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 talents that go into making a film. It's not just actors. It's not just directors. But we've talked about stunts. We've talked about set. We talked about hair and costume and makeup and and score and music is just as essential part uh, of a craft that goes into making films as any other part. Arguably, probably one of the more important parts because music just translates emotion and moments so well right try listening to star wars without the music that would be a strange situation It'd be a lot of awkward going on awkward breathing and shuffling and explosions <laughs> yeah exactly and like just just the sound effects but no music so score is important so we want to give some focus and attention to that so today's segment standout score ethan what is your standout score of the week that is a amazing question and it's one that's had me stressed out for the last few days. Um, because I've, so for me, I've been listening to, I've been watching a lot of, we've been continuing our Steven Spielberg and John Carpenter uh, marathon. So of course we've yeah. been listening to John Williams or John Carpenter. So much. Like there's just been, there's yeah. been two yeah. <laughs> composers that I've been listening to. And so for me, it's, and there's a lot of good music between the two. Like there's a lot of great music, but I'm going to have to go with uh close encounters of the third kind. That is, Ooh. it's honestly probably my favorite Spielberg movie as well. It's one of the best soundtracks. I feel it's just got such a good mix of a sinister tone with, an optimistic and happy one. They snuck mm -hmm. in when you wish upon a star in there as well. Um, Cause I don't know how they got the race to that, but they did. And it, <laughs> but they did. It works amazingly. And it just, it makes me just feel so happy. And at the end of the day, that's a lot of times <clears> it's, it's what I can base. Well, why I like movies or why I like the scores is how it makes me feel. Yep. And, just watching the movie and just listening to the music i just you know smiled a bunch and as soon as the movie finished i went on to apple music found the soundtrack and i'm like yep i have this on my computer now and i can listen to this whenever and <laughs> i guess i guess i'm snagging that up because it just it's just really 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 good it's just i don't know it just again like it's, it's a stupid thing and i get it doesn't translate over podcasts but anytime i just think about things that make me happy i just get quiet stumble over my words and smile like an idiot <laughs> it's it's like meeting like a famous hollywood person you get like starstruck but it's just thinking about something that makes you happy it's like well, but, but, well if i get this but, way over thinking I, I, I about like a score stuff. and stuff i probably need to rethink my life because what's going to happen any <laughs> i become a filmmaker but Dude, anyone scores I, are awesome. anyone i work with i'm just gonna like 
freak out about and just like <clears throat> I can't, I can't I can't I can't talk to you I can't I can't say anything I'm just gonna smile like an idiot at you. <laughs> no, Ethan, this is a really emotional scene. You need to be crying. Just keep sm <laughs> just smiling. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, that would not be great for a director, too, hey? Like, Kate, whenever you're ready, boss, you're just in there like, ah. uh, uh, Action! Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and they just keep going? Like, is he going to say cut? I don't know. Just keep going. No, no, you guys, you, you're doing great. Just keep doing your thing. I'm just going to, I'm just going to watch. <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy. Where's <laughs> my popcorn? Nice. This, is, this is nice. That's yeah, no, nice. Absolutely. And I figured because we both listen to scores too, like we're 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 those type of people. Like I literally listen to scores in my car, like movie scores in my car, and like my wife, it drives my wife nuts. <laughs> it drives. My I mean, wife I feel nuts. like, like well, we just are listen we both... to regular music. And I'm like, but I want to listen to Lord of the Rings. Are we both guilty of being those nerds who listen to like the Star Wars soundtrack in a store snowstorm, thinking that we're going through hyperspace because you know. <laughs> You ever reached that level of nerd? I've yet? never done that, but that's interesting. No, you should do no. it, man. It's, I, I it's... mean, I listened to the score, but I've never done it in a snowstorm. You, you should do it. Like, it, it makes hyperspace. You, it makes you feel like a total nerd, but like, it's fun. Huh? I'm gonna put that on my to-do list for next winter. That is because I hate driving in the winter generally. So, what's well, so good? I've had it happen at least three times in the last five years because my tradition, whenever I go to a Star Wars movie, is about the soundtrack before i go right and then on the way home i pop in the soundtrack after i've watched the movie and i listen to the soundtrack on the way home and luck would have it every year for the last three for the last three star or last three trilogy movies they've been released at christmas time so i've had a right i've had a star wars soundtrack to listen to during the winter and it just it guess there's something about it there's something well it's, i even had that just randomly i think there was I can't remember what the soundtrack I was listening to, but there's one day where, like, on my way to work, there's this awesome, just this heavy fog that's set in a valley, and, like, I drove mm -hmm. over a hill, <clears throat> saw the fog sitting in this valley, and drove into it to, uh, I can't remember what the score is, and it bugs me, but driving through that kind of stuff to that kind of music, just, I got goosebumps. It was just, it was just such an amazing feeling, and it just, it, it, Makes you feel like you're in a movie, right? <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say that. Like, it makes you feel like you're in a movie, like you're part of the whole thing. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's not nerdy. So was... That's cool as hell. I don't know what you're talking about. That's cool as hell. <laughs> you oh, are no, the, the coolest hyper... cat here, buddy. <laughs> the, the, the hyperspace is the nerdy part. Everything else is. Everything else is cool nice. as hell. <laughs> uh, okay, so my favorite score yeah, what's yours? Um, that I watched this week is it a Star so... Wars one? <clears throat> It is Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't want to be <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> Okay, so so here's is like my little like, kind of nerdy moment. Like, so when I was teaching my kid, like, no, it's not. I was talk I was mm. teaching my kid, like, lightsaber sounds and stuff like that. And uh, I was watching, uh, oh, what's this, this Disney gallery that just came out? Like, and it's the making of The Mandalorian. And they got, like, these round tables and they talk about Star Wars. So I was really hyped and into it. And I went to watch this one scene they were talking about, and it was uh, the duel of the fates in episode one. I thought with, so. With uh, Obi Wan and Qui Gon and Darth Maul. So that that's my favorite score right there, man. Duel of the fates, like hands down, this week that I watched. I also watched like all the other lightsaber fights, except the new trilogy. I didn't get into those, but I watched like the original six. I just skipped ahead to the actual fight so I could like you know teach my son the sounds and stuff like that because that's a good parenting right there dad of the year exactly yeah hey i man, should get a medal if, if for the that. sith if the sith ever come back we'll be safe because max will save us <laughs> exactly you guys i got you covered i got you covered i'm training the next generation of jedi already okay this is how it starts um but yeah no that's absolutely my standout score of the week duel of the fates there is something about that piece that is just electrifying like uh i it's not only the battle that's incredibly incredibly important to the Star Wars saga in that movie, but the music really communicates that epic scope and the importance of the fight that's occurring, right? Like the fate of Anakin, the fate of the galaxy. Um, and I mean, John Williams, he has like so many other good pieces too. So like, this isn't like my overall forever and always 
piece, but it's one of his best for sure. It's definitely one of his best. Like you get that music going, every, you put the first bit of that music, and everyone knows what you're like. Everyone knows what's coming. You get bum 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 bum. Everyone's like, oh yeah, let's do it. Yeah, F yeah. I don't know if that's everyone's reaction, but that's always my reaction. I try and tell people that uh, episode three, Battle of the Heroes, is like a companion piece to Duel of Fates. It is. And that's like, exactly what it well, is. And Duel so, of the Fates is actually in part of that. And Matt, um, do you want to know how I know that they're a companion piece? Together. Do you want to know how I know that that's part of a companion piece? It's because, because that's what George Lucas said. No, it's because um, oh, we got nope? to lightsaber okay. fight to those move or to those songs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, That's, that was what grade. grade 12. That was drama. I think, grade, that was was drama. that great? No, that was grade eleven. We got to re- that was grade eleven. I'm pretty sure. Well, I can't remember if it was eleven or twelve. It was we, one of the two. We did our both both well, we years. We did our, our own plays. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we got to write our own plays. We had to do it a, could be whatever we wanted. Well, it had to be a melodrama. And we're just like we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna like we're gonna write a Star Wars and one. We. And then uh, we created a lightsaber door. Choreographed it, practiced it. That was choreographed it and everything. That was sick. That was man. amazing. And like I said, cool as hell. That's not nerdy, we man. We are the coolest cats here. Dragged poor Nicole in with us on that whole thing. Oh yeah, she was very gracious. <laughs> she, she indulged the nerd. <laughs> to join our golf show. <laughs> but like honestly, though, like just going back to like, would you like to join us in our Star Wars play? <laughs> she. Well, we even had the opening scroll that we put on the projector yep. before, and we, we had like as the place an entire like we edited together like the soundtrack and everything too, and just had like a soundtrack to yep. each fight. And dude, again oh. going back to this like even with the drives and stuff like that, but just doing those fights to the music was such a just such a great feeling. Like it added to the energy. It just made I don't know about you, but it just it put a rhythm to it. It made me feel like I was actually in the movie. Like it just. It was good. It was just. I I think it was oh, great, yeah. man. Like it's, I think it, it was one well. Of my, I think it was well put it is together. One of my fondest memories. I think we got a good mark on that. Oh yeah. Too. Well, because I it's one of those things that we just went above and beyond. It was the same thing. Beyond. Whatever the other one was, yeah, yeah. we did. Uh, oh, actually, no, I have it here. I can show you this. The audience can't see it, but you remember the, these things? Uh yeah, the masks, man. I totally remember that because you couldn't. We couldn't talk. It was just. It was just body no, no, language, we, we, right? It, it was Commedia dell'arte, and we had to basically it was an improv. It was an right. entire improvised scene or an improvised story. We had like this basically the kind of story, and then we had to do like musical numbers, and it was just it was a mess. It was just a wild. That was, was that was that it was, was fun, amazing. Though. It was so good, and that was our other fi- other final to oh. with Star Wars. <clears throat> Look at us being nostalgic yeah. about high school and stuff. What are we people who are almost thirty? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah almost man yesterday my wife's like oh yeah like you'll be 30 in what a couple years and i was like uh seven months <laughs> and then it like hit me because i still felt like i have a year but if we've been locked down so long i'm like oh my god i'm gonna be 30 before we get out of this it's gonna be <laughs> made me want to cry <laughs> i still got 10 months I'm terrible gonna... <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway um yes duel of the fates my favorite one of the week absolutely amazing uh kick-ass piece of music i think super great um i did talk of i saw a clip of uh, dave filoni talking on that gallery there and he was talking about star wars the impact of duel of the fates too so that and when you i don't want to spoil it for anyone or like ruin it and i think we'll save it for another episode to kind of talk about and dig into it but i just love his profound take on it and understanding of it and then when you listen watch it again and have the music all there you're like damn this is this is such a critical piece of Star Wars uh, lore and history that uh, we just, I don't know, we don't really, never I never really gave it that much importance before, but now I'm like, damn, that's that's the stuff right there. Can we just acknowledge how like amazing the Mandalorian soundtrack is? About how much it doesn't yeah, I, sound like a Star Wars soundtrack, but like it sounds perfectly like it fits. It fits in it the Star fits. Wars soundtrack, yep. but it shouldn't by all accounts it's and purposes. It's on my phone. It's on my phone, man. Like I have it on my phone, and I listen to it all the time. Like it's it's like a Western Rocky kind of music, which makes sense because I think it was the same composer who did Creed, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, he did um, Creed. He did Community. He did uh, Black yeah, Panther. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
I can't remember. What's his name? Do you have it on there? Uh, Ludwig. Ludwig something. Um, Ludwig something. <laughs> something Ludwig. Uh, Ludwig. Let me just quickly Google this for a second. Uh, cool. I'll talk about it for a sec. I just, yeah, I love it. Like the first time I heard it, I was like, oh no, does this really work? And then you hear it in like the next episode, the next one, you're like, oh no, this works. Like it, it's awesome. I love it. You begin. That piano. I'm like, man, I just love it. So uh, Ludwig good. Ludwig Gorenson. I could probably oh, okay. be mispronouncing okay. that completely because there's two dots over his O. <laughs> so like maybe. Right. I don't know what that makes sense. I have makes. no idea either. I don't speak English. <laughs> but like <laughs> I, don't, I don't speak English with dots. Exactly. Um, but like there's been other composers who have tackled the Star Wars sound, and sure it sounds kinda like Star Wars, it sounds kinda like a John Williams yeah. clone. But it just it's missing something whereas this one just sound like that's i think that's the whole thing and we could discuss this for a whole episode too is the mandalorian just shouldn't fit in the star wars universe but it does and that's what makes it great that's what makes that's it what work. makes it special man like, and that's and we're talking about this last week it expands the universe right like it, it moves away from like the traditional norms that we've had in star wars for so long and creates something new but yet it's so different, but yet it's still part of the universe. Like it fits and it makes sense. Well, I think that's why I think that's why the fan base kind of has rallied around it so much. Yeah, because it's such its own thing. It's not. It doesn't remind us too much or too little of the prequels or the sequels or whatever. It's just its own thing, and it's it's. I guess it probably helps having a familiar face being a Mandalorian helmet. Like that's. Yeah that's a face we all recognize as star wars fans <clears throat> for but. sure and it's a great open it's a great starting off and jumping off point too for people who aren't even into star wars right like no and you I've... throw baby yoda in there people just be digging that they don't even watch star wars but like damn that baby yoda he's so cute he's just, he's so just... yeah like i think overall i mean again this isn't a star wars episode but some might think it is some you you would be forgiven if don't you worry. thought it we, was we have uh, plans but... we have plans we'll discuss star wars more in depth at later but, dates <laughs> yeah but the mandalorian absolutely great series and again the music it works it just really encompasses what the mandalorian's all about it's star wars with the with the western themes and it's just man it's great it's just it's great phenomenal absolutely all right so all right so scores. that's uh that's our standout score <laughs> we got that done um yeah no great choices and uh that'll be a great segment to come back to time uh time and time again as we come back to it at some point in time anyway moving forward well we promise uh, we promise not every answer is going to be john williams based and star wars <laughs> i like how we yeah, both picked I think, a john I think williams this is almost one. the like end of... yeah for sure there's so many other great composers out there too but it depends what you're listening to that week right so it's kind of always luck of the draw. Um, all right, so let's get into our main course, our big segment, 20 years, 20 movies, our best and worst movies here of 2017. These were hard choices, I know, for both of us. Uh, again, 2017, yep. it wasn't as good as 2018 or 2019, but there were still some real standout movies uh, and some also real bad movies in 2017 as well. Uh, so let's get into it. Ethan, do you want to kick us off? Best movie of 2017. All right. um, so for me, this was, it was kind of tough, but because there's, there was a lot of really good movies and I kind of, I, I keep trying to find movies to get away from the big franchises with. Like I really, I right. honestly have, I've tried for the last little while and it's hard. And this year was exceptionally hard. Because <laughs> yeah. this one has my favorite Marvel movie of them all. Well, there's tied for the top two. But, like, this has Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Two. Yeah. And I I somehow thought maybe you would pick that, that one. <laughs> I, I love it so much. It The last 20 minutes destroys me every single time that I watch it. I am just a blubbering mess from 
I think it's, I can't even remember the moment, like what moment it starts at, but like it starts around when Star-Lord finds out what happened to his mom, to Rocket leaving them behind and not wanting to lose any more friends, to them almost all dying, to like Yondu, everything just like stacked mm. upon stacked upon stacked upon stack, yeah. and I'm just like a mess for the last like 20 minutes and I just tear up. And it's just, it's not good, It's but it's so good! And the soundtrack is amazing. The music they picked for this one, I like the soundtrack for the first one, but I like the soundtrack to the second one so much better. Like, it just, it's just one of the best soundtracks to a movie that there is. The score is also phenomenal, the acting is great, the character development is great. Kurt Russell is amazing as Ego. <laughs> he's like, so, he's very good. There is, there is nothing about this movie that I dislike, and it just makes me so incredibly happy when i think about it and it's just it's the colors are amazing the like i don't know i could just list off everything about the movie that would be positive but then i'd just be talking about the movie in in total and i just <laughs> i i can't wait for guardians 3. well you can talk about the movie <laughs> but it's like if that's i mean thing, i guess you don't have to go over every single scene but yeah exactly do i want to go over every sing- single scene probably but uh i don't want to give you an audio commentary or a play-by-play because <laughs> it's just it's just as i said man it's just the whole thing works so well and to make me both split my sides laughing and cry my eyes out that's a rare occasion for a movie to pull off mm-hmm. for a movie to be that silly and that serious it's 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 so tricky and it's hard to it's hard to imagine like it's hard to see that but then guardians provided that for me um a close runner up and this is what made it so difficult was it chapter one came out and i know right, i didn't that talk about it that chapter... year, yeah i didn't talk about it chapter two in my um i did not see the second chapter yet. video i i liked it i thought it was a good cap to it um but uh, i like the first one a lot it was really good chapter chapter one just it really it was a solid movie i wasn't scared i wasn't scared of it but that's because it was such a good engrossing story like Mm -hmm. it's just it's a great coming of age story i don't really view it like to me it's yeah it's a horror movie but it's so so much less of a horror movie and more about a coming of age and like especially with a lot of what stephen king does with his stories there's a really decent amount of coming of age stories for him and this one just the way it was translated into this movie was phenomenal so that was my close second pick um honorable mentions would be murder on the orange express i really enjoyed got a kick out of that because i wasn't expecting to love it too much but it was fun the soundtrack was also really good for that uh war for the planet of the apes was an amazing final chapter to that new planet of the apes series it was phenomenal and andy circus deserved an oscar for it i thought it was marketed all wrong but i liked the movie itself oh yeah like i don't disagree with the marketing but the movie itself was phenomenal yeah um baby driver is also on my list as being an honorable mention because that's just a really fun one mildly tainted Uh, i was kind of like meh on it i watched it and i thought i thought like it was good i just thought it was overhyped a bit i i enjoyed it quite a bit and then unfortunately kevin spacey's in it though but i mean like other than that (laughs) (laughs) now he's gonna come for me (laughs) (laughs) now he's coming for you man yeah Bad like, boss no, style. Aside from aside from that, the movie itself is good. I like the soundtrack to it as well. I found that it's really cool how it's an action movie that's kind of shot like a musical, but it's not a musical. Like it's a really mm-hmm. weird in how it's shot and organized, and there's so much to analyze about it. It's just it's an amazing piece of art. And then <clears throat> to cap off my entire list of honorable mentions is kong skull island because who doesn't love a good monster movie and it was just fun and it's big honestly, ass monkey <laughs> out of my out of the um new run of monster movies like the godzilla ones kong is my favorite so far i can't wait for kong versus godzilla which is coming out hopefully this year hopefully See this year there yeah and fingers crossed yeah Those i realized dope. i kind of realized over the past couple of years that king kong i prefer king kong over godzilla i have no idea why i just every version of king kong i've seen i've enjoyed and it's just it's a fun it's a fun uh, fun story and i just it's it's good 
So those are my top picks. Do you want to go over your <laughs> Nice. I think I think recently too, just touching your Godzilla King Kong. I think recently they've just had more success with King Kongs. Like those have just been better quality movies than Godzilla's. Um True. I liked that reboot, like this Godzilla iteration we have right now. I liked the first one. I thought it was pretty good. Like I wanted to see more damn Godzilla. But yep. you know, I was cool with it because they kind of did like a Jurassic Park thing almost where they like hide the monster. I think they hit hit him too long yeah you know what i mean like because it's like what you don't get a real good look at him to like the last third well, that's, that's why i like the movie that's why i like so godzilla king too of the long, monsters but i like the idea they were kind of doing that's why i like king of the monsters better than the first one because like we got godzilla everywhere. and i'm fine yeah. with that as I, said, I think i said it last time is those movies could have 100 percent monster fights and i'd still want at least 20 percent more monster fights before i'm gonna be well they just had like really weird cuts in that movie that was the only thing for me yeah like a fight would just get going and they're like back to the people i'm like i don't give a shit about these people man (laughs) who are these guys you see the monsters man like yeah and it'd be like a a key moment in the fight they're like and to the people you're like why are we cutting here why is like if you why are we cutting here (laughs) if you look at kong skull island and the situation that they're dealing with being it's a survival movie Right, yeah. it's not a oh we're at our homes and we're getting attacked by these monsters. It's no, we're in the monsters' territory and we need to survive it. Yeah. So the human stories directly interact with the monsters. It directly yeah, exactly. relies like, on the very, fact it, of like it, like you could can't. It's a have... more put together, cleaner narrative. Oh, exactly. And the the acting in it is really good. The characters are really fun. Yeah. It's just overall to me, it's just a solid story beginning to end. I know some people didn't care for it, but well, I loved it. It's it's. It's Tom Hiddleston, Tom Hiddleston, right? Tom Hiddleston, right. Brie Larson, Brie Larson, Samuel uh, Sam Jackson. Jackson, just a big MCU cast right there. <laughs> um, John Goodman, Hilarious. is amazing, right? Um, and uh, sometimes in my head, I get the two mixed up between Kong Skull Island and King Kong, like Peter Jackson. I, I like, love Peter Adrian, Jackson's King Kong. Was Adrian Brody in this movie? I can't remember. No, he was in the like, last low, one, and he was also he good. was in he was in Peter Jackson's. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which was again, I enjoyed that movie too. So again, like that I was, was saying, I think Kong recently they just had a better job. Oh yeah, and then um, together. Also, uh, John C. Riley is one of the uh, one of a very heart, right. heart, heartwarming story that just tears at your heartstrings and just makes you so happy by the end. Yeah. Um, and also a tiny bit of a straight out of Compton uh, reunion. Because uh, they had the guys who played uh, Dr. Dre and Easy E in it. Mm. Which is great because then um, uh, Ice Cube's son is in Godzilla King of the Monsters. Oh, so, is he? Yeah. <laughs> he's one of the soldiers. <laughs> I'm like, how did I not miss that? How did I miss that? Yeah, man. No, and the, like. I was probably just pissed. I just wanted to see monster fights. I'm like, I don't want to see these damn people. Get I mean, like, <laughs> that's fair. That's 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 more than fair. I I can appreciate that. And that's as I said, that's what I like my biggest yeah. complaint about the Godzilla franchise is there just hasn't been enough monster fights. And I can't wait for there to be I can't, I can't wait for there to be more like that's what King Kong versus Godzilla I'm really excited for because there should just be exclusively monster fights. Hopefully. Hopefully hopefully we get less interhuman drama stuff and more <laughs> focus on Let's just have a clean, easy I want less story. I want more action. A lot of kick-ass action. monster fights. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like, no, well, you want a story, but you want it to be clean. Like, we don't need all these interweaving parts and whatever else. Or, like, their motivations of the story itself aren't really that interesting. Like, so it's just, It needs to yeah. be, uh, it needs to essentially be John Wick, where, like, Godzilla kills uh, King Kong's dog. <laughs> yeah, so King Kong's like, I'm gonna come F your shit up, man. I'm gonna mess you up. I would, I would. Pay I love how we're that. talking. About, I love how we're talking about your honorable mention and not your best movie right now. I just remember, I was like, oh yeah, that wasn't his best movie. Um, coming to your best movie, hey, but though, I think, I think Guardians man, Two is an excellent addition. Sorry, go ahead. That's the thing. Twenty seventeen was a hard year, man, because there's a lot of movies that I walked out of the theater being like, you know what? That made me happy. That made me really. It, it was really good. It was just a solid year. War of the Planet of the Apes. I didn't even see in theaters. I saw that on yeah. Blu-ray, and I loved it. Like. It just it's this. I guess there's a problem when you love movies is you're gonna always have more than one answer, right? Yeah, for sure. Like it's it's, and it's so you can't just base it off feeling too. It's like because like again, if I was just basing it off my emotions, then yeah, Guardians takes that. But then just basing it off pure enjoyment, there's just the list. I had to take movies off the list of honorable mentions because I had like three yeah. other three or four other ones that I'm just like, 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like it's that. It's a hard choice. I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's always a hard choice. Um, but yeah, no. I thought good picks, man. Good picks. Guardians 2, fantastic pick. Uh, we went to go see Guardians 2 in the theaters, and my, my wife, like, we literally sat through all the commercials, like, we actually went to the VIP theater at the time, because it was still good yep. pricing back then. In those days, it wasn't a ripoff, so we, like, had Three our years ago. pre-drink, we had our pre-drinks, we had our meals, or, like, we sat in our seats, we eating our food, we watched all the commercials, and just as the Marvel logo started coming up, she got a nosebleed and not like a little note like she was gush like like massive. we had to leave like we had to leave man so i literally saw the marvel logo and that's all i seen then i had yeah we got they they refunded our ticket so we got to come back kind of thing right that's how good the um, movie was, was nice is it gave it gave your wife a nosebleed like, before just before the movie even started man i was so like i was like god come on <laughs> come on so no, but when we did eventually go see it though, I absolutely loved it. Like again, the music, the soundtrack was great. The story, it was a lot more personal this time around. Yeah, it wasn't this big galactic uh, Star Wars esque adventure. It was just a tighter story, right? Uh, focusing more about family and and uh, you know and the Guardians well, and, as a family themselves and how they keep growing and obviously Peter and his dad and oh. it was like me and my dad saw it uh, at separate theaters different i think the same weekend but separate theaters and both of us walked yeah. out of the theater going like i'm like i need to call my dad and my dad's like i need to call <laughs> ethan and, and we're like oh the boy and so we called each other we're like hey how are you just watch guardians it was really good right <laughs> and it's just, yeah. ever since i don't know what it is man father and son movies have been like hitting me hard over the last few years because like going Lately. and seeing seeing lion king and the scene where mufasa yeah. dies like that hit me emotionally guardians 2 i watched field of dreams and it destroyed me and it shouldn't <laughs> it's not that emotional of a movie but like the ending i was just like it's just so and his death and they're playing catch it's, ah. it just gotcha like it did it did i don't know what it is yeah it's <clears throat> mom and son films don't bug me i have no idea why it's, it's not like i don't love my mom less I, <laughs> you're probably, like yeah bambi meh <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, whatever. It's Bambi. It's fine. Meh. But like father and son movies, it just it hits me, and I don't know why. Just been here, yay. Yeah, and it's just, it's been the last like five years, and it's just I, it's it it's good because it's like hey, you know, I can appreciate these movies, but also it sucks because I don't want to feel things all the time. <laughs> I'm tired of feeling emotions right now. Sometimes I just want to watch the movie. Take it easy. I, I thought this was gonna be and not cry. I thought this was going to oh, be man. a good movie. <laughs> and oh, it turned yeah. out to be a great one. It's so good. So good. Uh, but so, well, yeah, man. No, I agree. And the soundtrack, of course, like you already mentioned, fantastic. The chain was great in it. Uh, Brandy, you're a fine girl. God, love that song. Like, and just how they, like, dude, interweave just, that into the narrative. I was like, oh, man. So It's good. a soundtrack you can just throw on in the background. And it's great. Like, it's Or you can actively listen to it, and it's great. But enough about Just my some top of the best picks. tunes. <clears throat> enough about, All right, enough so okay, about my we'll top move picks. On. Let's talk about yours. <laughs> I just wanted to give you some talking time. Like I said, I was like, man, I feel like I'm talking too much already. So we got to, I was just you, trying to spread the, it out. You're the one people want to listen to. You're the one That's people come to the show true. for. That's 100% You know what? I'm going to put, I'm going to, I'm going to put a poll on the YouTube video right now. Who do you come to listen to? I'm also going to have the option for neither of us. <laughs> so I don't know why they're here. That, but I so think they should should there also be an I'm gonna put for a, both of us then? Yes, sure, yeah. But I, I guarantee you, man, no one's here to listen to me. They just I love disagree. you. They're like, man, I, that Ethan guy, he's so classy. That Matt talks way and then too they meet, much. And then they meet me and they're like, wow, he's the opposite of classy. <laughs> he's the worst. No way, man. They're like, this guy's super cool. He does lightsaber fights in high school. That's dope <laughs> as hell. <laughs> Ethan's the Brita of people. Like, let's... <laughs> he's the Brita people classic all right let's go into uh okay so my best movie a 2017 again like i said this was a hard one uh we talked a little bit earlier just how 2017 felt for us and for me it was very um 
middle ground. Like, there was a lot of things that I, like, I enjoyed or I disliked, but neither to extremes. But the ones that I did really enjoy, the ones that I did really dislike, they were, like, on the high ends of those spectrums, right? So it was either you're dead yeah. in the middle or you're, like, the farthest ends possible. And so it was a, it was a tough call to make uh, this call. But as I went through it and thought about it, I was like, no, this movie is definitely my movie of 2017. And that movie is Darkest Hour. Is that oh the my one God, with, I, uh... I love Darkest Hour. It's Winston Churchill. So Darkest Hour tells the story of Winston Churchill. I and... have not seen this movie at all. I cannot okay, comment in so the slightest let, about this. Let me tell you about this movie, man. Because I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. Goose, I'm getting goosebumps right now, man. Just thinking about it. Like it's getting. This is your your Gremlins reaction and how crazy you got. This is how I'm feeling right now. But it's not that torn. It's all just pure, like excite, <laughs> excitement, man. Like I'm just. I You're feel just giddy. On edge. So. Okay, so let me try and get through this without, like, getting too giddy that I can communicate in a clear possible manner. So Darkest Hour tells the story of Winston Churchill and this great moment of history that he was tasked to carry. Um, I love this movie. It's not maybe for everyone, but it checks off my boxes. Okay, three boxes it checks off for me is history, speeches, and Gary Oldman, man. History, speeches, and Gary Oldman. These are three things that really stood out. Again, like I said, I want to do three points and not like 12. <laughs> so those are the three big ones. Uh, for me personally, like a lot of this stuff in this movie, I guess maybe isn't for everyone. But for me personally, history is awesome. I'm constantly yeah. fascinated by history and the incredible impact flawed but immensely driven humans can have during these key moments throughout our past. When I think about it, I think of two key moments in history where the fate, literally the fate of Western civilization as we know it, and freedom were at stake. Okay, first one is the Battle of Thermopylae. King Leonidas and the 300 Spartans, when they stood against the conquering portion, forces, conquering forces of the Persian army, uh, that was one moment that was like absolutely critical to even how we exist today. And that was thousands and thousands of years ago. But what a moment that was. And no less of a critical moment when Winston Churchill, against all odds, inspired a nation to stand against the conquering forces of the Nazis. So in both of these cases, these men stood up against the darkness and bought enough time for freedom to be won. And if they would have given in, if they would have given in, history would have changed and our world would be far different before we were even born into it. Like, that's how impactful this moment in history was. And that's why it just gets me so <laughs> fired up. Because, like, just talking about it, man, I'm just, I'm trying not to lose my freaking mind right now. Uh, one of the one of the quotes from the movies was um, that he says uh, in his speech was, Without victory, there can be no survival. And that, and Darkest Hour literally tells that story so well. Like, without victory, there could be no survival. So it really encompasses... This movie tells that story and that moment of history so well that you're just so involved, so invested, and you feel like you're really there. So the history they got, like, spot on, man. It was great. It was great. Um, so you're saying I should two, add it to my watch list? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I rewatched this movie last night while I was like, making like my talk like my little notes here so i can remember like, do i like this as much as i remember and, uh, it and then <laughs> and i was watching it again like just in the background because i was like oh as soon as i thought about it i was just getting fired up what if you would have okay. picked this movie and then watched it and then absolutely hated, hated it, it again <laughs> just like then i guess oh, I, yeah, this then, is then, great. I, <laughs> then i guess i would have had to answer your question about rewatchability and been like yeah it was terrible uh, that Apparently, two years, three years, that, three years that makes the difference. So badly, that would have backfired <laughs> so badly. Uh, I'm glad it didn't though, because it's great. It's on Netflix too, so really easy to watch. Really easy to get a hold of. Just darkest. Well, and it's on my list now. And you should definitely watch it. Um, so point two that I was talking about, and again, this one maybe is a bit more particular to me, but speeches, man, 
speeches. Okay, I am a sucker for masterfully written inspirational speeches. Like I am a sucker for it. Like I could draw it in. If you could give me an inspirational speech about buying a fridge, I'd be like, I'm buying the fridge, man. That's it. I'm done. Like you've sold me. <laughs> like I'm in. Nothing um, gets me more fired up. So could we could we maybe possibly agree that the best movie speech ever is an Independence Day? Eh? Eh? Yeah, it was pretty good. I wouldn't say I the best it's... speech ever though. And, what is the best speech that, then? Like, or, it, or is it, it your is darkest hour? It's probably honestly in the darkest hour, man. I just get but that fired. Did, can like, it, but can it count but though? That, if it's like because it's a real speech. It's a real speech yeah. that as soon as a president I'm a sucker starts for quoting the real the speech, like yeah. Mo- okay, fine. Movies, de- movies depend, right? Okay, going back to like my first example, like that history, but like in 300, like anytime Leonidas addresses his Spartans, I'm like hell yeah, like in that movie, right? <laughs> so like I get, we died I get in really hell. Like, Eat hearty, cause tonight we dine in hell. Like just, I get like, yeah, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So Independence Day, like it was good. Like his present speech was really good, really inspiring. But it just, it lacked that like, mm, like just, just, just the, just the, I don't know, address of it all. Cause it was very presidential, right? Like it was presidential and it was inspiring and it was great for the context, but it was, it's not my favorite of all time. So, yeah, no, nothing gets me more fired up than those, like, um, inspirational uh, speeches and that sort of thing. And Winston Churchill, when we're talking about real-life people, like, he was one of the best orators of all time. Like, of all time. Um, I wish I honestly had a little Winston Churchill who just, like, followed me around performing his best speeches. Like, I'd be unstoppable, man. Like, the, the just how it gets your heart pumping. It inspires you to... You like fight on against your resistance in your own life and like whatever you're going against like it just fires you right up and if i had a little winston churchill who's going around telling me his speeches all day long man nothing would stop me i'd just be like rolling down the competition would the gravit would the gravitas of his uh speeches be missing if uh <laughs> if he was tiny. He's smaller if he's smaller <laughs> like is his voice gonna be the same or is it gonna be like <laughs> i get what you're whatever saying. the cost maybe i don't know it might still work i don't know i just know if i had winston churchill with me i'd just be like unstoppable um but anyway going back to come, come the winston movie. Churchill. <laughs> um using only words winston churchill he inspired the british nation to not give in to the nazi threat and really i think it's uh, very poetic just in real life history terms because hitler was also a great orator like he also inspired his people i mean not to do great things like terrible things but he inspired his people but his greatest opposition on the other side was also this master orator so you had both of these guys inspiring their forces so it was kind of like it was very poetic like in real life history which you don't see too often but it was very poetic these two just masterful speakers leaders and these two forces coming into you know opposition it was crazy um, but in the movie, you see yeah. all, you see the skill of Winston constantly throughout the movie. And it's not just like a whole movie of him giving speeches. And I'd probably still watch that, honestly, and still give it my best <laughs> movie of the year. Two even hours if it was. of speeches. But it's not that. It's not that. But it has a lot of the scenes of him actually crafting his speeches as well. So thinking about changing keywords for higher impact, constantly, constantly editing for clear communication, right down to the last second. This movie is like partially a master class almost in speech writing so if you're actually interested in speech writing or you know that 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 art form as it is you would find that aspect of the movie very interesting and of course it was a big part of you know who winston churchill was and the effect that he had on the nation and history um and then of course you have the speeches themselves powerfully performed by gary oldman and i'll talk about him in a second in his performance uh but they have the power to inspire even today speeches they're not just a small aspect of the film or side story they are essential to the film as they were essential just in real life um i I wrote down another quote here just because i'm loving quotes right now like speeches and stuff that's really (laughs) part of it uh in the movie one of the characters lord halifax says at the end he mobilized the english language and sent it into battle and that's what it was said fictionally in the movie real life john f kennedy said that in 1963 
and a journalist in 1945, Edward R. Morrow, also said that. He mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. So this is how important speeches were and his ability to communicate, his ability to inspire the nation of England to stand against this Nazi threat, like this incredible darkness. And they really paid great attention and gave it enough focus in the movie. Like, I didn't feel like it was too little. I didn't feel like it was a lot. Like, the whole movie is in him just be like, I'm writing speeches. I'm saying speeches. Like, there's a lot of the whole history that went on as his character, as a person as well. Um, but it was in there enough to show that it was clearly a significant part uh, to what made Winston Churchill so important and critical in real life history. Um, so that was in there. So those two things, history and speech writing, maybe aren't everyone's cup of tea, but I love them. So it really worked for me. Uh, third well, point, Gary Oldman. Man, are you a fan of Gary Oldman? I'd imagine you are. Oh yeah. I don't want to put words he, in your like, mouth though. Dude, like, like, no, like he's like untouchable as an actor. Like he, like the amount of skill he has, the amount he transforms for each character. Like it's basically, <laughs> I mean, like, not not to just talk about Batman in general, but, like, him and Christian Bale <laughs> are two of my top actors because they the amount that they can transform as characters and as, as people, every yeah. role you watch, they're so different than their last. Even when they're slightly similar, there's still, there are those nuances and there are those differences. And, like, yeah, Gary, Gary Oldman is an artist through and through. Like, he just, like... He's a master at his craft. I can't even th- like he uh, really is. I can't even think of like a favorite performance of his because they're all just stellar. I don't think I've ever this watched is a movie like when you like, wa- eh. when you watch this movie, man. This is gonna go up there as one of your probably one of your favorite. Like it is a ridiculously good performance. Gary Oldman absolutely completely he embodies Winston Churchill. His performance is one of the best I'd say of his career. And like I'm a fan of Gary Oldman. And I love him in like most movies i've seen him in like he's always brings an incredible talent and incredible ta- uh, presence to the movies and films yep. that he's in and like you said he's transformative but in this movie like it's a whole different step like you don't even recognize it's gary oldman if you didn't know beforehand going into the movie that this is gary oldman i'd put 10 bucks down you probably wouldn't be able to pin who it is i'd put money down that you wouldn't be able to pin who it is uh part of it's from his performance the character, the nuances, the voice. The other part, though, is like hair and makeup, man. Like, oh yeah, th- like he he looks like Winston Churchill. It's ridiculous. It is truly a transformation. Uh, so we're talking about transformations, man. This movie, talking about transformative actors, he's gonna blow you away. He's gonna blow you away. I'll tell you that right now. So if you haven't seen Darkest Now, I guarantee Ethan, not just Ethan, but everyone, if you haven't seen it, watch this movie incredible performance incredible it's on um, my list now <laughs> he's like we're telling me <laughs> no I'm oh my gosh you, man <laughs> how dare you Three talk about later, your have you not watched this movie this is you and like how, ready player one which i still haven't watched yet but I'm how dare you that. talk about movies <laughs> on our podcast about movies <laughs> yeah jerk um but yeah no gary fully portrays all the layers of this character as he goes to these incredible ordeals uh humor anger frustration vulnerability charm kindness pain panic hopelessness and incredible resolve gary oldman fully portrays all these aspects of winston churchill uh he gives a masterful performance of winston churchill in the depths of these i get darkest hours <laughs> that's the title of the movie right <laughs> darkest hours uh giving this figure the justice he deserves as a historic icon but also showing all of his humanity his strengths and his weaknesses and the struggles he had to face to become what we needed him to be. Another quote, you are strong because you are imperfect. You are wise because you have doubts. And that was his wife in the movie, uh, Mrs. Clementine Churchill. Clementine. Um, But I think that quote just really sums up the character and how they went about it, right? Not only did they show his strength and his wisdom in moments, but they also showed his imperfections. They also showed his doubts. Um, so I thought yeah. that quote really just really summed up uh, again uh, how the how Gary Oldman performed the character, how the character was written, and uh, how they showed all parts of him. Uh, and when you watch the movie, you'll see it like the first scene that he shows up, and you're like, "Oh man!" Like he's incredibly 
Like, it's a very entertaining... I don't want to spoil it because it's a very entertaining scene and you just got to watch it and enjoy it and be like, oh, damn. But there's so many other aspects to this film, even, like, that I'd want to go through, but we'd literally be here all day long. Like, I could talk about this movie all day long. The writing is incredible. It gives so much care to these figures, their relationships, specifically with uh, his wife, his typist, and King George the Sixth. And how yep. these relationships grow and change through the course of the movie. So they did a great job with that. Again, hair and makeup and costumes knocked it out of the park. And the score perfectly reflects the emotion, the impact, and the importance of each scene. Um, also, just incredible scenes through the film. Like, there's this one scene where he's in the underground subway. And I won't... Like, that's a moment you just have to watch. But it's honestly one of the most moving scenes of the film. It is just incredibly impactful. So... I mean, you'll, you'll know it when you see it when you watch the movie. So I can't, I don't want to tell you anything else. I want to talk about it, but I don't want to tell you anything else because I don't want to ruin it for you so you can watch it the first time. Hey, man, you, you've um, sold me on the movie and you got me excited about it. So I'm good. <laughs> um, I guess just to sum up, ultimately at the end of the day, I love this <laughs> film, man. I love it. Like, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. I'm getting fired up. My heart is beating. I mean, I'm a little sweaty right now. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's too much detail but i just love this movie so much it brings to life this critical key moment in history and it puts a focus on churchill's speeches that inspired a nation gary oldman portrays churchill not just as a heroic icon but as a complex layered real human being who with enemies on all sides endured and led a nation against the darkness that was the Nazis. And bought time, right? For victory that we could live in the world that we have today. If England would have fallen and would have surrendered right away along with France, we would not be in the same world we are today. Guaranteed. It, um, it would be a very different, it'd scary be a place. very, very different, scary place. Uh, this film inspires. Not only, not only in the mind, like with deeper thought. Like it's not a movie... You, you get inspired when you really dig into it and think about it, but it inspires. It's the right word. It inspires in the heart, right? It stirs up pure emotion. Uh, it stirs up fire, like you can feel it in your chest. Uh, and not only just about the history and what happened, but it, it inspires you to endure in your own life till the end, right? Whatever you're pursuing, whatever you're trying to achieve, whatever your goals are, and. The road's always rough, right? There's always a lot of resistance. But this movie inspires you to endure, to push through right to the end. Last quote. Real quote from Winston Churchill. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And that's literally sums up this movie. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. So just, man, just, yeah, absolutely amazing movie. Amazing message. They did such a great job putting it together. Uh, let's see. It, it won a Best Actor Award for Gary Oldman. These are Academy Awards. Best Makeup and Hair. And it was nominated for Best Picture, Best Cinematography. So a lot of awards there. So, yeah, no, this is absolutely, hands down, my best movie of 2017. I got some honorable mentions here as well. Um, which were really good too, but I, I just had to give it to this movie. And obviously, as you can see from me just rambling about it for three hours. Yeah, like, in all I honesty, it, like, I was surprised by your answer, but, like, I'm pleasantly surprised by your answer. It's kind of, I said, it's nice to derail from, Switch like, things necessarily <laughs> the, well, instead of talking about the big franchises, like, some of us totally did. But, like, it's it's really nice to see that where it's it's acknowledging films that maybe not didn't get as much recognition as yeah they could and i think i honestly think that's something we both appreciate as film watchers is the the yeah. ones that maybe they get appreciated by the academy and by awards and stuff like that but when it comes to the mainstream they just kind of kind of kind of get overlooked and that's where i think i like i don't mind you rambling about it man i was having fun just listening cuz it's just <laughs> yeah like i, I want to watch I this movie honestly... now I could honestly talk about it all day, Ethan. There's so many scenes. There's so many moments that just, like, it literally gets my heart pumping when I watch it. It makes me smile. Like, I just, like, when I think about it, I'm like you right now. I'm just, like, just hey, smiling. At least, but, at least you can talk when you smile. Like, I, as soon as I start yeah. smiling, my mind just goes blank. And I'm just like. You're just like, oh, I can't just, say things. That's I'm why I have to happy. write down little key notes so I can remember what I was talking about. Or else I'd get totally See, distracted. See, I should. I should. As I, I should before. do that. I should make notes, but I, I just, I, whenever I start thinking about it, I'm just like, nah, I can't make notes. This is, 
it it on it honestly helps just because like just how my mind works i'd get so easily distracted i'd never know where i was at so it definitely does help you don't they don't have to be long just little just little do, 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 do. little bullet points just a little but yeah exactly man and it definitely or helps quotes, but it, or, yeah or or write down quotes like and i only quoted things because it's a movie about speeches if you're gonna talk about speeches no, man, you gotta like, put in quotes man that really honestly though it worked movie. like it it worked and it, it's i i appreciated the quotes i appreciate everything about that so yeah what yeah, are your honorable yeah. mentions though i want to um honorable i want to hear these other films <laughs> these are also really great uh logan so I wanted to almost give it was between this movie and Logan because Logan, while it is see a that would have been a conversation, movie, uh, it was a franchise movie. I thought it just had a lot of depth to the characters as well. But anyway, honorable mention Guardians two. Obviously, you covered that. I thought that was fantastic. Thor Ragnarok, Taika Waititi. I can't yep. help but put Taika Waititi in there. He makes me laugh. He has so much heart. That movie's got is just awesome. Coco. I don't know if you saw that one. That had a lot seen of Coco heart yet. too. Pixar. No, not yet. Oh, my. Pixar. I guess not Pixar. <laughs> Pixar. Was it Pixar? It was Disney. I don't know. Whatever. Most it's of these are Disney, Disney movies, Pixar, I guess. Yeah. It was bad. Uh, and then I put Last Jedi in my honorable mentions as well because I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I enjoyed it. And not so for obvious reasons. They're a little bit deeper reasons, I guess. Like once, um, as you dig into it and look at it from a certain point of view right so it just depends who you are and if you hate the last jedi good for you man keep on hating it if you love it good for you keep on loving it but I, i'm one of the people who really enjoyed it not my favorite movie of 2017 obviously but a good one and that's it the darkest hour it's on netflix easily watchable just look it up turn it on it's only like two hours easy watch fantastic movie well worth the time Okay, Ethan, worst movie of 2017. We'll switch it back to you. I've talked long enough. Um, I should, see, this is where I should just I should just change my answer and just make an argument and say Logan was my least favorite movie. Um, just really, really <laughs> buggy up just there. Just to make an argument. <laughs> it's it almost it almost made my list. It almost made my list because I didn't. It's one that I didn't love. Like I went into it kind of there was a lot of hype built around it and I went into it and it was not what I was expecting. Cause a lot of people were talking about how it's not a superhero movie. It's not a superhero movie and it's a hundred percent a superhero movie. It totally it still is. is. Yeah. And yeah, it still is. It's yeah. It's got a bit of a Western flair to it. I found the excessive use of swearing kind of distracting and taking away from the moments where it really mattered. Like when Charles would do it and right. it felt like they were kind of pushing a little too far for a hard R and I feel like they, could have still had an r but it didn't need to be as extreme as it was and the villain at the end just being the clone of wolverine was kind of i i think it should have been saber tooth it should have been something else it was a little very comic booky or even like just, that's a that's a super it was comic very, book thing to do right you're clone it was very sim it was too symbolic too because it's like ah yes it's a clone but he's the man in black and then the hero is the guy dressed in white and it's just too much of like, okay, like we get it. We understand the symbolism. It's a little too, it was a little too heavy handed for me. And so it almost made my list, but then, then it didn't because that was a movie I felt okay about. I, you know, didn't hate it, but I felt okay about it. And then it was in that I middle ground. Eh? <laughs> I'm going to say the, my least favorite film. And there's a few, but my absolute least favorite film was Transformers The Last Night. Because that was horrible. <laughs> it was terrible. It it was dude, not great. Dude, 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 okay, can we can we can we tag team this one? Because my worst movie was also Transformers The Last Night. <laughs> yeah, let's, we let's need tag, to tag team, team this because this. I'll let you start because, uh, but, like this movie was horrible. I'm I have surprised. more we can I, talk about afterwards. But I like, am surprised. Just to sum up, we picked the same. To one. sum up, how bad? Actually, it is. I'm not. It's pretty bad. So, <laughs> it was so bad. So, um, I'll preface this with this much: I liked the fourth one. I enjoyed it better than the second and third one. It wasn't a great movie, but I still enjoyed it for what it was, because it was a shape shake up of the characters, and it was so dumb. It was enjoyable. This one was just super dumb i couldn't follow the story at all it didn't make any sense it changed the entire continuity of the previous movies that were set up um 
I didn't watch this one in theaters. I watched this one at home. And the aspect <clears throat> ratio kept changing in scenes, in the same scenes. <laughs> the black bars would move. Why wouldn't you fix that for home release? Why wouldn't you have it where, I don't know, it's just a consistent thing per scene. It's not IMAX yeah. anymore. Why, like, we made the joke while we are watching the movie that the only one missing was full screen with the black bars on the sides. Like, yeah, <laughs> it was so distracting, so I couldn't follow the story because of that. Mark Wahlberg's character was fine, but he wasn't nearly as pertinent to the story as he was in the first one. And then they're still trying to tie it to the Witwickies, which didn't make any sense considering there's no Witwickies in the movie. Or was there? I don't remember. And you had, Ad how did you I get Anthony so. Hopkins to sign on to this movie? Yeah, no doubt. That's like, the that's the million dollar question. He like, clearly must just, have just it, needed like ten bucks or something. <laughs> like, well, it's and like this once again, the story didn't make sense because the Autobots have been there the whole time since King Arthur's day, and we've always known about them. But then how come? Again, it even ties back to like stuff in the second movie where like the whole point of the second movie at a certain point they needed to find a Decepticon to like translate things, and then they found one and they freaked out, and it's just, like it's just. It didn't make any sense, and I'm really upset about it. And it's just, it was just, it wasn't good. It was, it was really, really, really bad, and I just couldn't enjoy myself. At least with other ones, I can turn my brain off and be like, you know what? It's a dumb movie. But this one was yeah. so dumb that it it hurt. It just it hurt, and I want to like it. I love the Transformers. I've grown up loving the Transformers, and I just can't. I just can't bring myself to enjoy it. And it just it it made my whole household angry, and it doesn't it just didn't <laughs> it make made sense. my whole household angry. Like the movie made your household angry, or like yes. you not liking it made the household angry. No, no, the the movie what it was the movie very, itself. Was, okay, yeah, yeah. I was like, there was a pretty a bunch large of people like that movie. No, and apparently it did terrible compared to the other ones. So that's why we got the Bumblebee reboot, which apparently that one's good. From what I've heard, I heard Bumblebee's that one's good. good yeah. I haven't checked it out but yet, though. But that's the thing. Transformers 5, Transformers 5 made me so upset that I couldn't even give Bumblebee a chance. I didn't even care to. I was like, meh. Right? Meh. That's how, that's how bad it was. Like, it just, it, and I, like, yeah, like, it just, there was just nothing in it that I can even think of that was like, you know what? This wasn't terrible. This wasn't, even, this was even redeemable. Even vaguely like, redeemable. Yeah, no. No, like, no. like, there I don't nothing. mind. I don't mind some of the actors who play the Transformers, but even then, like, I'm really tired of watching Transformers movies that aren't based around the Transformers. Also, wait, wasn't? It, hold on, I'm just remembering the movie. Uh, was Unicron the Moon or the or Earth? I think it was Earth. Why? Because the spike he... came out of the ground in the one desert or something, right? Or whatever. But why would... <laughs> like, he wasn't... It was like a setup for the next movie. That's obviously not going to happen never, because that, that never... idea was stupid. Why is he the Earth? Why is he the Earth? He could have been any other Wait, planet. He could... What, are they going to fight the Earth? Like, that doesn't even make sense. What What kind of... Uh, like, so what, does all of humanity plan? die? Like... <laughs> I guess that's what happens, yeah. Like, it's just... It, Psych, it, it you've been didn't... living on a Transformer this whole time. You didn't even what? know. See, it's not global All warming. We're just dealing with the a corp? transformation. Not existent. <laughs> it's just, we're just dealing with a transformation, not global warming. That's exactly what's going exactly. on. Exactly. That's what's happening. No, this movie... Uh. Um, also, again, like I said, my worst. And I'm so... I laugh. I wish you guys could see my face when he said Transformers the last night. Because I was like... Ah! I was like, that was my movie time! At least we agree on something. It's it is. We agree on something. And it, it's worthy to be agreed on because this was such a bad movie. As soon as I saw it in the list as going through 2017 movies, I was like, this is my worst movie. Did you see down. it in theaters? No, I didn't. I saw it at home. Me? And I was like, I still wanted to jump off a bridge. I, I saw it. I'm pretty sure it was on Netflix. Yep, and Netflix I for free. I still was like... I still was like, I want my money back. <laughs> like, I still. <laughs> I, I think we said the same thing. I think we're like, we're like, wow, let's. And I think we had to hype ourselves up to watch it too, because we had heard not great things about it. And we're like, okay, yeah. let's finally just watch it and we can make our own. Maybe we're going to love it. Maybe we're going to like it. We'll give it a chance. 
Yeah. Maybe it's a thing where yeah, you know, people hated it and we're gonna like it because that's happened to me with movies before. Well, well for sure, especially and, Transformers, right? Like a lot of people have bashed the Transformers. I watch them. I was like, that wasn't that bad. Like it's the hardcore fans, right? Who are like, oh no, this isn't specifically right, and it's it's the whole iteration argument, right? Um, and I've generally been like, ah, oh, actually that wasn't that bad. I don't know what you guys complain about, but this movie, I was like, oh, never mind. This is shit. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to especially with like with Michael Bay movies, a lot of them are he's just making entertainment. And he said that as much. He's making. Yeah. He's a smart businessman who knows how to make money. And makes movies where you just turn off your brain and you just watch them. You don't think about logic. You don't think about anything like that. And, like, that's more than fine. But this one was just, like, this crossed the line of, like, you could tell just stop giving a crap. Like, it was just, like, it was just, it was, like, I could forgive the last four because whatever. You know, I can at least turn my brain off and somewhat enjoy robot fights. But as soon as that, as soon as, as soon as this one just hit, it was just... I don't know. It was just I, I, I'm just losing my I'm just losing my speech now because just, <laughs> it's so bad. I've talked about Transformers for too long now. <laughs> okay, um, so I guess for me, how did you? Uh, we'll yeah, give how you a you break so you don't it? lose your mind. Let's we'll do a shared collective loss of mind here. Uh, like just for me, I just want to point out, like I do, I have liked more Transformers movies than I've disliked. Like I'm not just like I hate Transformer movies. I only really disliked number two. Like, number two was not good. I like number one. Number three, I thought was a considerable improvement over number two. And I yep. found four that had plenty of merit, like you said. Switch up of the characters. I really liked Mark Wahlberg's character in that movie. Like, that overprotective dad. I was like, I get this guy. <laughs> like, I just the only loved thing, it. The one thing I really I really wanted the, the boyfriend in that to actually not be real, but be like a bored Transformer catfishing this girl. <laughs> And pretending oh, to be a guy and then that, he shows actually, up that would have lost like, it for me <laughs> i i it's thought terrible. it would like i mean it's is it any worse than the uh like it just he's a hologram that like i wouldn't want any like whole like oh no he's a transformer that could conveniently turn into a human like in number two because that was just bogus in number two yeah because number like, two is stupid but like like basically you know how they have like the holographic people sitting in their chairs and stuff like they sit in the the sure yeah, can't, yeah car seat yeah that's so that's that's how much Transformers Five has wrecked my brain. Is I can't even describe basic like parts of a car now. Um, so you basically have it be like <laughs> you know he's sitting in this car, and then she hops in like because he's like I'm here to save you, and she hops in, goes to give him a hug, and she falls through the hologram, and then you're like oh my goodness, he's a Transformer the whole psych. time. Psych, <laughs> psych. I've only ever seen him in his car. <laughs> well, that's I mean convenient. it would be <laughs> again, it would be a lot better than the whole yeah this Romeo and Juliet clause in this law, yeah. which makes it not illegal for me to date someone who's underage. That was yeah, weird. That was a little strange. I mean, whatever it was like, it was fine. Like, but again, I, I, it, it, so it fed into Mark said, Wahlberg's character, right? Like as the dad, because as again, any other father, you'd be like, I'm going to destroy this guy. So I thought it was good. And that, that said reasons. though, that said still not as bad as transformers five. No, like, absolutely. <laughs> like four, I actually didn't mind because it kind of made like the humans, like it kind of, it kind of like lived in this gray area. Because before Optus is like, we gotta save the humans, and four, he's marching into that building like we need to talk. You know what I mean? Like it's slapping some people around, and I loved it because the humans betrayed the Autobots, right? So I loved this whole like gray layer mixing of things, and I was like, okay, no, this is cool. I get it. I like it. Um, so four, I thought it had merit. But five, it's easily the worst. Easily. And to to put a cherry None on number of it made two, sense. I watched number two by myself in a theater while all my friends watched it in another theater. Okay? So, like, ever, I remember, like, the group was like, I don't know, Shannon and uh, Paige. I can't remember. Mason was there probably. They're all like, yeah, we're going to Transformers. Like, well, where's my invite? They're like, oh, yeah, we didn't really think about it. I was like, cool. I'll buy my own ticket. Wait. But the ticket I bought was to a different theater. Was this the so, premiere like, for it? I don't know if it was the premiere, but it was pretty early on, like probably opening weekend. Did you go to that? I'm trying to remember because there was there was one of the screenings we went to, or one of the one of the showings for one of the Transformers movie. I can't remember if it was the second or the third one, but the same kind of thing happened where like our invite was missed. So me and 
I think Sam and a couple other people went to, somehow we got a showing before the showing they went to and like we walked out of the theater as they were in line for it and they're like wait what how did you where did you come from yeah okay so i think it was like the same movie but like i got my for the same time as them so i was like cool yeah but it was actually in like a different like auditorium <laughs> i was like are you effing kidding me so while everyone went to watch that i got to go by myself sit by some bald guy who smelled like feet and watch this movie by myself. And I still is think it maybe that's five why is worse it? than two. No, two was dumb. Like, the fact that it was bad didn't help the situation. Like, if it was good, like, I go to movies by myself, and I can enjoy them. But the fact that it was bad didn't help the situation. But I still think five was worse than two. Um, and not because I was watching it by myself. Five, like, you just, there's nothing to get. Like, you, I, I was, there, like, it thinking about sense. it. I was like... You can't hate something you don't get. But then I was like, oh, wait, no. You totally can't hate something you don't get. Because that's kind of what people do. But honestly, this whole movie, I'm watching it. I have no idea what's going on. It made zero sense. And the way even it was edited, like, it just jumped around so senselessly. Like, it made no sense. They did exposition dumps, and then they jumped somewhere else. Like, there's that scene, and I'm trying to remember this correctly, because I'm still trying to figure out to this day what the hell was going on. There's that scene with Anthony Hopkins and he's dumping a bunch of exposition yep. about the Transformers. And then the next thing I know, they're driving down the street. Like the same characters who are in the house, they're now outside the house driving somewhere. And it just cut to it. And I was like, where are you going? Why are you going places? What is going on? So I just... I don't even I, remember I, it. That's how bad it was. I don't... And that's the only thing I really remember a whole lot about this movie being like, there were just scenes where people were talking mid-sentence you got a cut and they're outside doing they're in a totally different location same people different location you're like what is going like it was impossible to follow i thought the characters were bland and not used well at all like i said i like mark Wahlberg's character but i didn't really like him in this one like i don't remember what he did like, no like that's nothing. the thing it's like, it's fought his character Evil was Optimus suddenly just something like i don't know um he was, was made obsolete in there. suddenly do you remember that kid there's like that girl oh yeah she the was, one like, that they built in, like, like the... a bunch of promotion they, yes they built a bunch of that... promotions around her yes yes so that and was my thing then... that's what i put in my notes here i said this they had the whole girl strong thing and all the trailers and promotions and, and she's like movie, barely in the she movie did nothing she did nothing and i was like nice they're like girl power equals nothing like great message there guys like they literally uh, they literally used oh. her to get a different audience in and that's a whole thing other thing that and just then they dropped her though me. like she did nothing like she had no point nope, to that she... movie at all nope and, and it was just, i guess was... just like just summing up like the action was shallow even the action itself was shallow right it did nothing for me uh and it's a great way to sum up the whole movie like it was just shallow like all surface level explosions what can we blow up and try and make some kind of weird story connect to it it was just bad it's just bad it was like, not great it, it, like i don't care if you're michael freaking bay man you're getting paid a lot of money to put this movie together like can we not do a good job writers directors like what what what, what was the plan here so well, i think the budget was I pretty hated big that too well of course um, it was it was a transformers movie and i'm sure they paid him a hell of a lot of money to come back and do it because i don't think he was like i think four was supposed to be his last movie then he came back and did five and it was this so yeah it was oh yeah i hate this movie man this is easily the worst movie of 2017 and not just because like boo transformers but story uh plot writing you know acting like it was just not a good. mess it was, it was just was a giant... editing editing a mess oh um, so yeah i don't want to talk about that movie anymore that much though because well, i can i, like I can talk bring about up some things my... i love but... <laughs> do you want me to talk about some of my dishonorable mentions <laughs> sure yeah bring up your dishonor let's get away from transformers so okay just so uh, up. we don't like transformers if you didn't it, figure it that was... out at this point <laughs> it's bad a massive that's, disappointment that's is an understatement, but I'm I'm glad we finally like had a similar one to land on. 
Um, so my yeah, second, I'm pick, still waiting for the one, like we talked about message you yesterday. I'm waiting for the one where it's like my best picture and your worst. I don't know when or where that's going to happen, but I feel like at some point it will. And that'll be, a good I think it will. I'm excited but for anyway, that. Carry I on, think it'll carry be good on. entertainment. Um, <laughs> so my second pick, like it was a toss between these two. It was that or the mummy. Did you see the Tom Cruise, the mummy? That, if if we were doing I ain't watching that this 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 episode that's on my list no I did not see it and I have no it's, intention of here watching. here's the thing if you feel like you ever want to watch it just do yourself a favor and watch the Brendan Fraser the mummy yeah just, I love Brendan just, Fraser I love those movies they're yeah, great yeah like no like well, it was one. not good it was pretty it was it was rough it was not it didn't make sense they were trying to set up a dark universe it just it wasn't Fail. worth it it wasn't worth Fail. the effort they could have done so much better um so on a side note though let's keep going through the list because i don't want to just rant about the mummy i I could i could (laughs) but i want to say i think that's i think that's a topic for a different like there's a whole bunch that we could talk about for a different that all yeah i think we could do a whole one on uh, universal monster movies and i actually i want to do that at some point that would be fun um so on my list as well is bright i bright was a massive train wreck and was not handled the way it should have been uh the greatest showman was super hyped up for me and by the time i watched it i didn't care for it it wasn't terrible wasn't the worst thing i'd seen but it also wasn't good it was like at least i didn't mind it i thought it was pretty good the music was pretty good and that's the music when like the the problem for me is i went like because i didn't see it until way later until it came out on dvd and all that kind of stuff and for about a year i think i saw it like a year after it came out maybe a little longer for that whole year, I just kept hearing how amazing it was from so many people. So, like, my expectations were, like, way up high. And then I watched it. I'm like, oh, that was okay. It was a musical, whatever. And, like, that, I think that's what kind of disappointed me. And it's just, it's, it, maybe it deserves the hype. To me, it didn't. Kind of fell flat. In the same breath, uh, same thing with uh, Beauty and the Beast, the remake. Which I feel like that's, discussing Disney remakes is a whole other video as well. Because, like, that oh, was another yeah. one that just kind of. Oh, Yeah. It was unnecessary. It fell flat. It just didn't didn't do well. The Beast song was a great addition. I loved that. But aside from that song added for the Beast, it just, I didn't need it. Um, Spider-Man Homecoming, I have very strong feelings about Spider-Man, as we've discussed in the past. Um, and I really didn't care for this one, despite the amazing cast and all that they did. It just, the story fell flat. And again, that's... I keep saying this is for another video, but I mean, like, it's true. <laughs> that's there, that's like, that should be our if, catchphrase. <laughs> a feast of film. That's for another this video. Is, this, is, <laughs> this is a discussion for another video. That's for another time. Yeah. It's our new uh, catchphrase I, now. Finally on this was uh, Resident Evil 6. Mm. Um, look, the Resident Evil movies haven't been good since the third one, arguably since any of them, depending on how you yeah, feel I would say them. any of them, yeah. <laughs> um, but, so, Resident Evil 6 was a special watch time, because me and my roommate actually, like, it took us, this movie's like, I think, an hour and a half, and it took us a few hours to finish it, because we kept pausing the movie to figure out the actual, like, time frame, and whether or not it actually made sense of what was going on in continuity. Right. Because, like, they, they set up a time limit in this movie, they're like, it's gonna take this long to get here, and then we started pausing and doing the math to figure out if it actually fit, and it totally didn't. It was just none of it made sense. <laughs> yeah, of course not. <laughs> and it just like they're of course like, not. look, don't set up rules for yourself if you're gonna ignore the rules. Like, stick with them. That's it's that yeah. simple. So, I'd say like the movies, the movies on my list for disliking got a lot more of a negative reaction for me than the movies that I liked. So, uh, yeah. Those are my dishonorable mentions. Do you have any? Yeah, some of those I didn't see. Like I didn't, I didn't see the like Resident Evil one because I gave up after like maybe the second movie. I was like, yeah, I'm just not gonna watch these anymore. <laughs> that, that, that was enough. That was enough for me. For me, most <laughs> of those movies kind of like landed in that middle zone. Like I didn't really like dislike them that much. Or, there like, wasn't really any that you that hated. Much. It was like middle zone for me. Um, there was two that I really hated. That I was like, yeah, I'm good. So two movies, dishonorable mentions. The Emoji Movie. That was a horrible movie. <laughs> it was. I, it was. That's what I just was, knew not to watch. <laughs> it was really bad. It was so bad, and like, and it, it, like it's clearly made for kids. But even by that standard, it wasn't great. Um, because even kids movies 
a lot of the really good ones have still themes and stuff that the kids will get when they get older, yep. right? Like that are a little over their head. This movie had nothing. Like it was just it was just nothing. It was not good. So it couldn't be saved by Patrick Stewart as the poop emoji. Oh my god, that was the dumb. I'm like, again, how did they get him to sign on to do that? Like that's what I mean. Like sometimes um, he's like huge legendary actors like sign on to do like the dumbest roles and you're like how did you even get that person other I think than he a said lot of he money. did it for his grand he did it for his grandchildren that's why he did it he, oh he's yeah like, yeah and, no, like i have grandchildren was, i'll be in a kid's movie <laughs> the movie was garbage oh oh anyway so the moji movie not good um and then justice league was my other one i had Man, that on my I list did, but it was <sighs> Dude, I did not dig Justice League. Like, my whole, like, honestly, I liked Man of Steel. Like, I'm a fan. I'm a Man of Steel supporter. I think that movie is terribly underrated. Batman v Superman, when I first watched it, thought it was junk. Uh, watched it a second time, maybe a year and a half later, and I thought it was slightly okay. It was like, once you get past the editing, because it had really weird cuts in it as well, and the storytelling was really strange, and they spent so much time on pointless things that didn't matter, and the, the logic behind it, some of it was pretty dumb. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know. It went up a little bit on my scale, but it's still nowhere near my favorite movie. I thought it wasn't great. Uh, but Justice League was even worse, right? Like, this is what happens when you have one creator who had a vision, and then stu- then those couple first ones don't do as great or there's backlash and they they try to change halfway through like by the time batman v superman came out and people were like this movie is shit and warner brothers were like "Uh uh-oh justice league was already well into production (laughs) like they're already putting it together right (laughs) so now you're middle again of the movie you're getting rid of one guy and bringing in another right so it was just and they said it was like family issues or whatever um, for him, but clearly there is is some background stuff with the studios, and whatnot. Uh, there was so some that other movie things. did not come together well. Like it was such a bad movie for me. I didn't enjoy it. I wanted to give it just like a break. I'm like, oh man, I like Batman stuff. I'm sure it'll be fine. And it was like, not good. Like it was just, I I can't even watch it again. And there was one. I guess that one scene where Superman's fighting the Justice League was like pretty cool. At least that moment when Flash is running around him and Superman's following him with his eyes and Flash is like, oh shit. But like the rest of that movie, I was like, this is just painful. Oh, and the face CGI thing. The mustache yep. thing with Superman. Oh my God, that was so bad. That was... It was absolutely terrible and totally ruined any part of the movie that Superman was in. That, the, that's just the, that's, that's the just of the, what happened there. So, yeah. Justice League, dishonorable mention. Not the worst movie of 2017, but it was bad. It was almost on my list, but then I remembered that I liked it more than I thought I would because I I went in with no expectations. I was like, oh. we oh dude, mine were pretty I, I added low it, too, but I still look, was like, I added nope. it to the list. <laughs> we're we're gonna do we 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 got to do a video on the DCEU. We 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 have to because goodness it's gracious, be part we of are it, yeah. We're gonna disagree on a lot of things, I think, but like overall like from from man of steel on my my actually no from man of steel on and then wonder woman oh yeah no wonder woman came out in 2017 2017 as well yep yep early on in 2017 justice league was at the end wonder woman uh shazam and aquaman have been exceptions to that rule where they've actually been better than the other ones but like literally wonder woman being the only gleaming light of hope in that entire franchise just really i went in with no expectations about justice league like absolutely none so i was pleasantly surprised when i didn't absolutely hate it yeah there's problems throughout it like obviously but it wasn't the worst movie i've seen from that franchise so far so for me i didn't dislike it as much as you and i disliked the other movies a lot less than it but overall like it almost made my list. It almost made. It, so, <laughs> it was almost there. It was. It was, it was close. Almost but there, eh? <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't as bad as some of the other ones I mentioned. Yeah. Oh man. Anyway, yeah. Sorry that's to bring it. up all that negativity, man. Let's. Just... <laughs> yeah, I, I like this. Really got away from us once we got into like worst movie. We're like, let's bash on Transformers. <laughs> 
<laughs> we don't usually spend that much time on like the worst movies. We really don't. But that's we, that's how. But again, but though, that's, that's, that's how bad it was. How bad it was. Just, like, and the fact it was that mind boggling, that, terrible. We came to those conclusions separately. That we yeah. agreed on it all. Like that's. In the yeah, history of the three true. episodes of this podcast, that's never happened. <laughs> that's never happened before, <laughs> and probably won't happen honestly for another while. Like it'll probably at be least a while. another unless three there's episodes. something incredibly terrible in the next couple of years that I'm not aware of. Um, but yeah, just wrap it around to a good point. Watch Darkest Hour. Watch Guardians of the Galaxy Two. Two great movies. Fantastic. Both, I think, is Guardians Two still on Netflix? I don't know. It might be over in Disney Plus. Now. Uh, it's on Disney Plus for sure. Or, I don't know if it's still yeah. on Netflix. But uh, no Dark Tower is on Netflix. You can find it there. Those are two great movies. You spend time watching them, they'll be worth your time. They'll be worth every penny you spent on your subscription just on those movies. So check them out. And hey, all right, let's head. If you, oh, sorry. Even if you, what? even if you, if what? you like the movies we dislike, Where? that's also cool because that's just our. Well, yeah, that, it's just that, our that's feelings. what I said too. If you love these movies, like good for you. Keep on rocking. Keep on rocking, right? Like that's that's your call, man. It's great. You know, we celebrate that you love these movies, but for us, they definitely didn't work. And again, we stress these are our opinions. They just, they... This isn't this isn't un you know it's not it's not unquestionable fact, right? These are just our opinion. Transformers is pretty they close just heard to unquestionable in... fact, though. It's pretty close, but there's still probably some. They, people they hurt like us it. in ways. <laughs> they hurt us in ways that we can't recover from, and yeah. <laughs> just can't do so, it. So, uh, all right. So let's so what's uh, next let's, for you, Matt? let's uh, wrap this up quickly with what's next. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm gonna check out Vikings and Lost Kingdom. That's really one. Those are both on okay. Netflix, two uh, TV shows talking about history, right? Like, like I said, history. I'm a big fan of history. I wouldn't say like I'm a history buff or anything, but I love it. Um, and there's a new Assassin's Creed game coming out, Valhalla. It's about Vikings, so I'm like, gotta get in on my Viking lore and history. Gotta go check this stuff out. So I'm gonna go check yep. out Vikings and Lost Kingdom this week. Uh, Green Book is still on the list. Ready Player One is still on the list. Vice is still on the list. I did watch John Wick three last week, and goddamn, that was a good movie. Um, but yeah, it's no, so those three movies, those so Viking stuff, Green Book, Ready Player One, Vice. That's kind of what's next on my list here. What about you, bud? Uh, we are continuing our John Carpenter, Steven Spielberg marathon. Uh, we just watched Christine last night and we're moving on from that. I don't know what Steven Spielberg film is next, so I got to figure out that too. Um, we've been watching Community, so we're finishing, we're continuing with that. It's a lot of, for me, it's a lot of continuing what I've already been doing. Right. I guess right. Darkest Hour is now on that list, but I'm just not sure oh, yeah, where that'll fit in. That, dude, dude um, it should be top of your list, man. Like, as soon as we're done here, you go watch that. And then you text me. Please I gotta, me. I gotta do, I gotta do writing, man. I gotta do, I gotta do my. Oh my yeah, that's to keep working. That's fair. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's uh, a lot of the same for me, but like in a good way because it's just this this marathon has been fascinating and absolutely wonderful. So it's awesome. Man. It's just been it's been a good reflection on two great filmmakers who deserve all the all the praise. So everything they have, right? They deserve it all. No, exactly. Absolutely absolutely Two arguably the some more all time argue arguably more all right yep. and that's it for us uh on today's episode we made it through we got through it i wasn't sure how everything was gonna go that first question was great but i got way off on the rails so i was like god i hey hope man, the rest of this comes together <laughs> that's part of the surprise question that's, that's part of the part surprise of the, question that, is to that just is, get things going is, and yeah that is part of the fun so, uh, Ethan, buddy, where can uh, people find you? You can find me on YouTube. Please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm trying to get over 100 uh, subscribers so I can change the name of my URL because it's pretty terrible. <laughs> um, so please go to my channel, subscribe, let me change it, then you can unsubscribe if you hate it. I don't post a lot of stuff on there, but I post things on occasion. Um, and it'll be linked down below, me. too, eh? Yep, all the links will be down below. You can find me on Instagram, uh... What about you, Matt? Where can we find you? Uh, you can also find me on YouTube. I got a YouTube channel called The Matt Black Project. And it's just different various projects that I've been kind of working on and that sort of thing. I had this coffee talk thing that I was doing during lockdown, but then I got stressed out, so I stopped <laughs> doing that. But I got other things coming too, so there's going to be more stuff on the way. And uh, that'll be again in the link. There should be a link down below or at the end of this video, I guess, too, in the little, little pop-ups that show up. Um, so yeah, go subscri subscribe there and, uh, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, where's our podcast now? Where can you find us? For sure on Spotify, for sh- on Google Play. What else we got? Anchor, YouTube. Um, yeah, I think. I think we got confirmed for a just couple gotta... more as well. Yes, uh, all those will be linked below. Um, we'll try and provide that information a bit more efficiently next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where can you find us? But... We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> every well every we day on... every like couple days we get like a new thing that it's like yeah you're approved for this site so it's it's constantly growing and changing so we just got to update it but yeah for sure spotify google play anchor wherever you can find your favorite podcast you'll find us to, to simplify the answer uh you can find us on the internet we are on the internet yes that is <laughs> that's right <laughs> that is good stuff anyway yeah and so again just to touch base remember guys if you enjoyed what you've been listening to and you've had a great time and you want to hang out some more you can always subscribe to this channel right here a feast of films and uh hit those notifications so you're always in the loop to what is going on give us and uh give again, us a like if, yeah likes are always really important leave comments down below again if you have a question or idea of the day or some topic you want us to talk about leave that down below and we'll definitely hit those up in one of our future episodes all right guys that's it this has been a feast of films episode three i'm matt black he's ethan, ethan Arnold, hill oh and thank we will you see you I, man i covered you this time <laughs> you gonna, the one time he answers <laughs> 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 and we will see you guys <laughs> next week enjoy your weeks everybody have a good one so long Bye bye <laughs>